Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Alyssa. Garrett's not here, and we're the Leffersons. I decided to just do this video today because really I am the only one that does this in the house. Garrett really doesn't do this, but this is a super requested, highly requested video from you guys, a video on how to pin trade online. So obviously you can pin trade at the parks, right? You have Disney pins, you can go to cast members and you can trade and cast members they get to, they have to trade with you. They don't have a choice. <laughs> but when you pin trade online, it's kind of a different atmosphere. There's definitely a lot more rules, a lot more guidelines. So I'm gonna kind of go through all of it. I'm gonna tell you what pins can you trade online, where I trade online, different platforms that you can use for pin trading. I'm also gonna show you how I take pictures of all of my traders, how I post them onto these sites. I also am going to show you how I package up my pins the correct way. And if you're looking to skip the post office, which I know we're probably all staying home right now, right? It's a social distancing. If you're wanting to skip the post office, I'm also gonna show you how you can pay for shipping through PayPal online so you don't even have to go to the post office. You can literally just put your packages in the mail and send them off and that is it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what pins can you trade online? So when you go to a park and you trade pins, as long as it's a Disney license pin, as long as it has that Disney license on the back, you are able to trade it. Cast members cannot turn you down. When you trade online, it's a little bit of a different story. There are such thing called scrapper or fake pins. Sadly, they are kind of all over the internet. If you go on eBay and you buy like those big lots of pins that are maybe like a dollar or less a pin, those pins are all fake, especially if they're coming from China, another country, they're fake. I'm telling you that right now. When Garrett and I first started getting into pin trading, we were those people. We went and bought them on those sites and got 50 pins for $20 and guess what? Not high quality. So fake and scrapper pins, you cannot trade online, especially through the Facebook group that I use. We trade all of our pins through the Disney Kitty pin trading group because there are like administrators and the group makes sure that no one is trading fake pins because you don't wanna trade a real pin and get a fake pin. That's no fun. A lot of you guys have asked like what the difference is between real and fake pins. I wonder if I have a fake pin somewhere. This is my little pin folio. I will show you what a real pin looks like. Hold that thought. I'm gonna go see if I can find a fake pin. Okay, I'm back. I do actually have a few fake pins in this little bag here um, because I've just like traded them thinking that they were real. I don't know. So, okay, this is a really, really good example actually. Okay, so this is a fake pin. This is a real pin, okay? I'm gonna show you the back real quick. And this is just gonna be like a, I could literally do a video just on this. So this is just gonna be a, sh a short tutorial. If you notice on the back of the real one, you've got the really nice waffle back, okay? And the waffle back lines up really nicely with the pin. It's not off anywhere, it's beautiful. You have these two little, little points that stick up. If they don't have those two little points, which it won't have that on every pin, especially on older pins, but that's a good way to tell if it doesn't have those and if they aren't sharp, that's a good way to tell if it's fake or if the waffling is off on the back. So like this is a fake pen. You can see that these little, they do have little nubs on the back, but they are not sharp. Do you see the little tiny nubs on each side? They're not sharp. And if you can tell, this is hard to show you guys, the waffling is off. And actually you don't even see any waffling in this corner right here. Do you guys see that? No waffling in that corner. So this pin is fake, okay? And a lot of the pin connoisseurs out there, they can very much tell the difference between a real pin and a fake pin. So if you're gonna pin trade online, first thing I'm going to recommend is do not trade fake pins. The pin trading groups will kick you out or tell you very kindly that that is a fake pin and you cannot trade it. So you do have to trade a Disney license pin. It has to have that Disney logo on the back. It has to be a real pin. Please make sure that you are trading real pins. Another thing I will mention is a lot of you guys were also wondering where do you buy real authentic pins? Disney Parks is gonna be the first thing I'm gonna say or shopdisney.com. Those are all going to be obviously guaranteed Disney pins. But if you're looking to not spend full price, you can very easily buy pins online through eBay that are going to be real, 
authentic pins. There are some sellers that I will recommend. Busy B1, I buy pins from, um, save some more, uh, Killjoy. I will leave some eBay sellers down below that I trust that I have had really good luck with, with buying cheaper and authentic pins that you can trade. There's also some pin selling Facebook groups that also sell like grab bags of real pins for maybe like as low as $2 a pin. So that's kind of a way you can trade. I will also uh, put down below a few of those Facebook groups that I'm a part of where they actually sell pins for cheap. Once you have your traders, now you're probably wondering, well, what are you going to trade? What do you trade on? I've already said this in a million different videos, but I trade through Disney Kitty's um, pin trading group. There are times where I will trade through Instagram. Sometimes like it's just a friend that we're trading with. You have to make sure though, if you're going to trade through Instagram or something that doesn't have a moderator, like Disney Kitty's group has admin, people who literally run that site. And if something goes wrong or if someone doesn't get their trade, there's someone there that can kind of be the middleman in between all of this. When you pin trade through Instagram, there's not that middleman. You're kind of just trusting that these people are going to send you your pins. And thankfully, I'm a very trustworthy person. So I have done that a few times. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that to start out. I would definitely start out on a actually pin trading Facebook group. And I will of course leave Disney Kitties down below, Becca's down below. There are some others. If you guys know of any other pin trading groups that you trade through that are really great, leave them in the comments below and I will add them to the description for everyone else. So now that we are going to be pin trading online, I'm gonna kind of go away from this camera and I'm gonna show you some of the behind the scenes on how I take pictures of my pins, how I post them, and how I package them and all the things that go into it there, but I'm gonna do that not here, so pause. Okay, so to start out, you will probably not have this many traders, but these are all of my traders. Um, mind you, we've been doing this for a while. I have been downsizing a little bit on the pin collection, so these are pins that either we don't wanna collect anymore, like we used to love these, but we've decided to get rid of some of our characters that aren't our favorites. These are all the pins that are up for trade. So what I have already done, don't mind the tree back there. It is a Christmas tree, but I just keep it up because right now it's giving me hope. Um, basically what I do next is I have already taken pictures of them. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to now post those pictures on the Disney Kitty pin trading group. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay guys, I'm literally like posting this as I'm doing this with you so that I don't forget anything and I'm so glad that I'm doing this because I am forgetting to say things. So another thing that you can do is like, so I'm like in the process of posting mine and you can see that I have all of my pictures there. What you can do also when you're posting your pictures is you can also post ISOs. So that means in search of pins that you are in search of. Um, if there are specific pins that you're in search of a lot of people like find that picture and post that like after their traders if that makes sense I don't post ISOs I think I did like maybe the first time I traded but it's just like a lot of work so instead I just put like things that we collect so I'm gonna say we collect Winnie the Pooh and Friends up Lady and the Tramp Baymax you know just like different things but I also like to say still willing to look at anything because I do like to just look at everyone's traders even if there's like something that I don't necessarily collect I just like to see what people have and what people have for trade so I really like to look at anything another thing that I'm gonna mention is if you feel like you are too nervous to actually post and have people reach out to you, you can also like go on to the pin trading group, which I will show you in a minute, and you can even just message people with your traders. You don't have to necessarily post like I am and have people message you. You can be reaching out to other people and messaging them. Let me finish this post. <laughs> Okay, so it has been a little bit of time. I have posted my post, but I just wanted to bring up a few other things. One thing to mention is when you like post your post, you want to also say like, if you are okay trading internationally or not internationally. So obviously I live in the US right now, kind of with everything that's going on. I said that US only for now. Normally I do like trading pins with people from the UK or from Canada or from wherever else, but I try to make it worth it by trading multiple pins. That's another thing that I wanna mention. If you are trading online, 
I find it more fun to find someone that is going to be able to trade multiple pins with me because then it kind of makes it more worth it for the shipping. But if there's a pin that I really, really love, I may only trade one pin. You know, it kind of just depends. So I have posted my post and I am still waiting for people to get to get to me, but I am going to mention one other thing. Once people start messaging you and say you decide to actually go through with the trade, whoever you're trading with and you have the right to also ask if you want a close-up picture of the pins that you are trading. Um, a lot of the times when I'm trading with someone, I automatically just send them a close-up of all the pins that I'm trading with them, and I send a close-up of the back of the pins. A lot of people on these pin trading groups are going to wanna see the back of the pins because as I said, that's kind of a way to tell if it's fake or not. And also earlier when I was talking about fake pins, see, I keep forgetting to say things. As I was talking about fake pins, I didn't mention that if it's an older pin, like way older it may not have that waffling on the back and it may be harder to tell if a pin is fake or not um, I usually go on pinpicks.com I think it's pinpicks.com otherwise I'll say it right here if it's different and I'll leave it linked down below they usually have on there they can tell you like if a pin has been faked and what the fake pin looks like and all that. like I said I could do a whole video on fake pins but I'm just saying that if someone does message you they probably are going to want close-ups of the pins so yeah all right friends it is the next day. As you can see, I've changed into a different outfit. I will say pin trading, especially when you like do a post and post it on a group, you get so many messages that it kind of takes a little bit, a bit of time to like respond and they respond back to you and send traders and send pictures and all that stuff. That was Oliver's tale. <laughs> so um, it is the next day and I finally, I have traded with several people and I have them all up here on this table. I'll show you in a minute. I kind of organize them and I'll show you how I do that. But I just kind of wanted to show you what messages kind of look like when you trade with someone. And I'm just gonna kind of show you like right here on my phone. So here's a girl named Jewel and she just sent me her traders and she sent me some more actually and so we ended up trading as you can see I did end up like taking pictures of the pins that I'm trading with her and the backs and she did the same for me so that's kind of like what's expected and then we obviously exchange addresses and once I'm done and I have them all packaged, I am going to send her the tracking info. Make sure that you send them the tracking info. That's kind of how I know like, okay, I can trust this person. They're gonna ship it to me. They're gonna send it to me. So I always make sure to send them tracking info just so they have it and I have it in case if it gets lost or something. So now I'm gonna show you all the pins that I'm trading and then I will show you how to pay for shipping and how to package up pins. Here are all of the pins that I am trading and or selling. I'm actually selling this one, which I put selling right there. These are all of the pins that I am trading. And if you can see, I kind of wrote down like what I'm trading it for, like what I'm getting in exchange. So like here I'm getting a Merida pin, here I'm getting a Tiana Box Lunch pin. And then on the other side, which I'm not gonna show you, I actually have the name of the person that I'm trading with and their address so that once, this is really all the information I need. Once I have their address, I can do the shipping information, package up their pins, and all my information is really right here. I don't do any spreadsheets or anything fancy. I just organize it like this. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how you can actually pay for shipping online through PayPal so you don't even have to go to the post office. I have just logged into PayPal. This is just my main page. I actually just go up to the help button. I find it way easier to do that. And I am going to just start typing in multi-order shipping and you will see it comes up right here. I'm gonna click on that. Right up here, it's gonna say create shipment. And then you can do today's order date or tomorrow, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put in my return address and then I'm gonna type in my person's information. Okay, so once you have the address included, you're going to click continue. Now, if you are going to be packaging your pins in a just a little slip package like I showed you, 
you are going to click first class mail parcel two to five days. And then I always click on package slash thick envelope. I'm not sure if it really matters. I think the price is the same, but I always click on a thick envelope because that's really what I'm sending it in. If you are only sending pins, if you're not sending anything other than pins, it's going to be somewhere under four ounces. If you end up including things other than pins like sometimes I include a keychain or something like that. You may want to weigh your package if you have a scale at home. I do have a scale that measures by ounces. So you may end up having something more than four ounces, but typically it's going to be four ounces or less. And then you do want your USPS tracking included. That's going to give you your tracking number. And then down here, you're just gonna click create shipment. And then if you have multiple people that you are sending to, you can create a new shipment and that's gonna bring you back to this page and you can just keep creating different things. Otherwise, if you're done, so right here is my person. This is how much it's gonna cost, $2.76, which is actually cheaper than going to the post office. If you go to the post office, it's like at least 350. So then you just go down here, review and pay. So like, I'm just gonna pay for my PayPal balance, but if you have information in there, then you can do that. I'm gonna click pay and there we go. Now it's here and here's the tracking number. You can send that to your person. I always just take a picture of it, but you can also type it out and send it to you, whoever you're sending it to. Then you're gonna print this label and there it is for you to print out. You can just print it to your printer at home and then I just cut this part out and I'll kind of show you how I package it after that. And that's pretty much it. All right, I am actually going to show you this little container, which is not normally out here. It's actually normally in the room that we film in, but it's actually back in the corner. It's hard, so I brought it out here to my living room to show you guys, but this is actually, an organizer that I use for Magic Mail, which is gonna sound ridiculous, but I have a Disney YouTube channel, so you kinda have to have it. You do not need to do any of this by any means, but I just like to be organized. So on the top, I normally have this in in one of these drawers, but I just bought a brand new one. This is just uh, bubble wrap. I buy all of my packing supplies from Walmart. I find it to be the cheapest. I think I got this big roll for only like five bucks. And it lasts six months, maybe more, depending on how much you trade. So definitely recommend going to Walmart or ordering online. This first little drawer here is just any little extra goodies that I wanna add in my magic mail. I like to add in a guide map from the parks. I like to put a little note on there. So here's just some little fun notepads. Um, these are just some Sorcerer of the Magic Kingdom cards in case if I wanna put any of those in there. And then other little postcards that I could add to Magic Mail. And then of course some pens and stuff. This second drawer is just stickers. I actually just organized this so it looks a lot neater, but um, I have two different little containers. These are little Marie containers that I got from actually Tokyo Kawaii Club. I'll leave that unboxing up above and down below. But in each one, these are like my nicer stickers. So ones that I can kind of more so give to people. And then this container is filled with like miscellaneous stickers, sheets that I've already used part of just random stickers that I can add to the actual package to kind of decorate my package a little bit. This next drawer is actually just kind of some Cricut stuff underneath, but then I also have just some cardstock um, Disney paper that I've used just for some miscellaneous crafting Disney things. And this next drawer is miscellaneous things that I could add to Magic Mail if I wanted to. Keychains that we don't necessarily want, extra wishables that we don't necessarily need. These little adorable things, if we want to add any of those to Magic Mail, just little things. This next drawer is actually drawer, a drawer of stuff that we keep for our trips. We have some of our lanyards in here, Magic Bands. We keep all of our backer cards for our nice limited edition pins in case if we ever want to sell them or anything. Just miscellaneous things. And then down here I have the rest of my packing supplies. So bubble mailers, um, I have some smaller ones if I'm only trading like one or two pins and then I have some bigger ones and some really big ones and then just tape, some fun little packing tape. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I use everything in here when I 
package my pins. Now that I have everything ready to go, I have my shipping label and I have my pins, I have my address, I am going to start packaging up my pins. Really the main thing that you need to know is that when you package these pins, you wanna make sure that these stay safe. You don't want them to bend or get destroyed during shipping. So I always recommend bubble wrap. You don't have to use a lot. I'll show you how much I use just a little bit, but just wrap it around each pin once or twice just so that it has a little bit of cushion and uh, that way these pins will not get ruined in shipping. If you don't have this, um, we've gotten them wrapped in tissue paper before. That would work too, even like cardboard. Anything that is going to be sturdy that is going to keep your pins secure. and that is it i have my first package all complete and ready to go i do still have several other packages to package up but i think you only need to see one to kind of get the picture i hope that this was helpful for you guys i know that this has been a highly 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 requested video and thank you if you are still watching hello oliver <laughs> If there is anything else, any other tips and tricks you guys have about pin trading online, be sure to leave those comments down below. If you have any other questions about pin trading online, leave those questions down below. We will try to answer as many questions in the comments as possible. And if you wanna see more pin trading related videos, also comment down below. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe to our channel for more Disney content and more pin content. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Oliver, say bye. Say bye. No? Okay. <laughs>